Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson, and welcome to the Health Beat Show. It's warming up outside. You're going to want to be traveling. You're going to need to hydrate. Today, we're going to be talking about water. We're going to be talking about all types of water. How much water do you need? How much of the body is water? How much water is in a man? How much water is in a woman? In our kids, drinking water. How about alkali water? What's that all about? How about water with minerals and vitamins in it? And how about the Watson Wellness Water? Stay tuned for the Health Beat Show so that we can tell you how to be hydrated, how to do well for these warm months, and what to drink when you're on vacation. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. Stay tuned. The Health Beat Show, sponsored by Watson Wellness Water. Your health is your wealth. To stay healthy and hydrated, experts recommend drinking at least eight cups of eight ounces of water every day. But over 40% of American adults drink less than four, and 7% reported drinking no water at all on a daily basis. Not drinking enough water can give you headaches and make you feel dizzy or tired. It can also affect your mood, making you feel grumpy and confused. But how do you know if you're really dehydrated? First, are you thirsty? By the time you feel the sensation of thirst, you're already dehydrated. Next, check your pee. If it's dark or you haven't gone in a while, then you're most likely dehydrated. When you're getting enough water, your pee should look clear or light-colored, and you should be going regularly. And if you haven't pooped in a while, that could be another sign of dehydration. It's one of the most common causes of constipation. Look at your eyes. Do you have dark circles or do they look sunken in? This could be from dehydration. You can also test yourself by pinching the skin on the back of your hand for a couple seconds. If it smooths out right away once released, then you're good. But if it moves slowly back to its original position or seems to stay stuck together, you're dehydrated. Welcome back to the Health Beat Show. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. Today, we're talking about water. We're talking about staying hydrated. You know, in a man, 60% of the male body weight has to do with the fluids that are associated with water in the body. In a woman, about 50% of the woman's body weight is associated with fluids that are filled with water in the body. Now, a baby, a little newborn baby, 73% of the baby's body weight is associated with fluids and water within the baby. Now, as we talk about this water and where it's associated, 75% of the water that's in our body is in the muscle tissue. It's in our muscles of our arms. It's in the muscles, the large muscles of our legs. And so that's why when some of you work out, you'll get cramps in the legs if your legs get dehydrated. You'll get them, a calf cramp is a common cramp to get or a calf pull. Sometimes people get gluteal cramps or quadriceps cramps. People who are exercising their arms sometimes get cramps in the biceps and triceps. That's because our bodies build up lactic acid. To drink the fluid, particularly before you exercise, sometime during the time that you exercise, and definitely hydrating after you exercise, pulls the lactic acid out of your body. Now, how much are you really supposed to drink? How much water are you supposed to drink? A man, we say, should drink about four liters of water a day. A woman, at least 
three liters. Now, of course, this relates to your age and your health status and your body weight and all these types of things. This is 500 cc's or a half of a liter. This is what a liter size looks like, 1,000 cc's. So in a man, we'd be talking about four of these a day or about three at least in an average woman. That would be about eight of these bottles a day. Okay, that would give you about four liters and um, maybe about six for a woman on this size. Now you have the kids out here playing, that's little Richie. The kids need to have a lot of water. They need to have a lot of vitamins and their muscles are gonna build up lactic acid too. Particularly when it's hot, you wanna stay hydrated. Your bones need water. Water is in your heart. It's in the cerebral spinal fluid. You hear of people getting heat stroke. Heat stroke is just dehydration of fluid that's around the brain. If it gets too hot, you sweat, you don't have enough fluid in your body, the blood vessels open up, the pressure in your brain drops, and people faint. That's what we call heat stroke. Look out for that this time of year because it's going to be hot. If you're exercising, stay hydrated. You can even pour some of the water on your head to cool yourself off. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson right here on the Health Beat Show. We're talking about water because I always say that your health is your wealth. And when you have your health, you have everything. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. Stay tuned to the Health Beat Show. We're going to be talking about preventative ways of living. We'll be talking about exercise. We'll be talking about eating regularly with five minutes of flavor and down-home healthy cooking. We'll be talking about the science of health. We will be talking about the changing healthcare system, about insurance, about what types of doctors do what types of things. We'll be answering your questions. If you want to find out any information about your health, the health of your family, or the changing healthcare system, contact us at healthbeattv.info. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. Welcome to the Health Beat Show. You know, exercise is very important. You ought to try to get it about at least 30 minutes, three to four times a week. And you're going to get a little bit tired, so water is the key. You want to stay hydrated. That's important because in men, 60% of a man is water, is fluid that makes up water. In a woman, over 50% of a woman's body is water. And of the body, 75% of that water resides in nowhere but the muscle. So it's very important to make sure that your muscles are hydrated. Much of it also resides in fat tissue. About 10% of the water that's in your body resides in fat tissue. So when you lose a lot of weight, which is what we're trying to do for this time of year, you're gonna lose some water. If you lose too much water, particularly when you're trying to exercise, your body will build up acid, acid production known as lactic acid. You wanna get that through you by drinking water. That'll push the acid through, it'll help your kidneys, It'll help your muscles so that you don't get cramps. It'll help you so that you don't get fatigued. Every athlete that you see, anybody that's out in the hot sun, anybody that is going for any prolonged activity, or even if you're just at work. Drinking water will keep you from eating too many of those foods that are going to give you that fat that's on the body. So water is a major ingredient for the diet. Now, the rest of the water resides in the stomach. It resides in the spinal fluid. It resides in the vasculature. Much of it is intracellular, but some of it you'll find that your ankles will be swollen, uh, things like that. That is water that's in the tissue. By exercising, like what we're talking about, 
you will be able to remove that from your body. You also, by exercising, dieting right, drinking water, like purified water, Watson Wellness water, that will help to cleanse your body. Important thing, some people ask the question about alkaline water. Well, if you are exercising heavy and you're building up that lactic acidosis, your body will shift to an acid type environment. Alkaline water is basic. It has a basic uh, quality to it. And when your body has some of the base in it, taking away the acid, your neurologic system works a lot better. The catecholamines work a lot better. Your reactions work a lot better in a basic environment rather than an acidic environment. So this is where the concept of alkaline water comes from. So when you think about that, you can look on your shelves, you can find alkaline water. Now some of you are going to travel this summer. <clears throat> You're going to go to places like Mexico, say for instance. Mexico has in some of the water, some of the places, it has E. coli. E. coli may give you Montezuma's revenge, that being diarrhea. How can you avoid that? You don't know if you're drinking tap water sometimes out of the glass. You don't know if you're drinking tap water, sometimes even out of the bottle. I suggest that you drink mineral water with gas in it, with bubbles in it. So when you go to Mexico, Mexico say, I would like uh, agua con gas, water with bubbles in it. That will help you to get mineral water that is more safe. You know that it's been in the bottle. It's been fermenting and you won't get tap water, you won't get the E. coli, you won't get the Montezuma's Revenge. Now, what if your diet does not include enough vitamins? Let's say you're a vegetarian, you don't eat much meat. So meat has some of the B vitamins in it, the B12 in it, some of the B6 in it. You can get some of those from vegetables, but some of the waters are infused with vitamins. Now, the key important vitamins that you would want to see, of course, you would like to see the B vitamins, the B6, the B12, the thiamine, the folate. Those types of vitamins are going to be healthy to you, particularly if you're a vegetarian, you're not getting in much meat, you're not eating some of the fruits that can give you some of those vitamins. Now, you also want to have calcium. Calcium is going to build your bones it's going to help your bones to be stronger. So if you are looking for mineral, mineral water, look for those types of elements. This is purified water. This water is clean. You know, when you look at water that has come from the Rocky Mountains, it has gone over rocks, it has, it has gone through the sand, and it is fairly pure. Sometimes water is taken and it's placed through charcoal and other filtering systems to make sure that it's purified. That means that you've removed some of the chemicals like mercury from the water. Uh, water includes the normal things like H2O and sodium chloride. Sometimes the water will be fortified with potassium. Our body needs those basic elements known as electrolytes. Sodium chloride and potassium are some of the major electrolytes which will help you to keep the natural acid balance base. So this is Watson Wellness Water. What's so special about it? It's water. It's just water. And I want you to drink water instead of soda all the time, instead of sweet drinks all the time, instead of uh, some of the high carbohydrate fruit drinks all the time, just get you some water. These are the doctor's orders. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. Stay tuned for more of The Health Beat Show. You're watching The Health Beat Show. We'll be right back after these very important messages. Stay tuned. Hi, you think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. Why would you do that? Probably okay isn't okay. Call a cab, a car, or a friend. 
good choice. When you get up to get a drink, you really ought to stop and think about the way you quench your heavy thirst. The refrigerator is loaded, but before you grab a soda, why not try a big wet glass of water first? Oh, water is a drink that you can trust. No one's ever lost a tooth from us. So try to drink six glasses and sit down between your classes when you're thirsty. Reach for water, you know you really ought to. It's the best no-calorie drink in all the world. The Health Beat Show, sponsored by Watson Wellness Water. Your health is your wealth. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. If you want to ask us some questions or you have a topic that you'd like us to explore, go to healthbeattv.info. I'll be glad to work with you in any way that we can because I always believe that if you knew better, you could do better. It's estimated that 75% of Americans aren't drinking the recommended amount of water each day. So to find out if you fall into that percentage, take a look at these five signs you aren't drinking enough water. Number one, you're thirsty all the time. Who'd have figured? Frequently being thirsty is a good sign you're not drinking enough water. So if you are, just grab a glass. Number two, you're constipated. Water keeps things moving smoothly in the digestive tract and without enough of it, you might find that the excretion process moves at a snail's pace or even grinds to a halt. Number three, you're always tired. Fatigue is a primary sign of dehydration, so if you find yourself unable to make it through the day without a nap or a caffeinated jump start, inadequate hydration could be to blame. Number four, you're gaining weight or are unable to lose it. When you don't drink enough water, your body attempts to hold on to every last drop it gets. This water retention can keep the scale from budging and in extreme cases even cause your weight to go up a bit. Number five, you're sick all the time. Without enough water, your immune system can't properly do its job. Staying hydrated ensures that you're producing enough lymph to transport disease-fighting white blood cells to every area of your body. Additionally, drinking water can help stave off congestions and sore throats from colds or the flu by thinning out the mucus your body creates. If any of these things sounded like you, you might be in that 75%, so go ahead, grab a glass, and have a drink. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure's too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just please, don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. Welcome back to The Health Beat Show. Remember that your body is made up of about 80% of water. Just like mom said, you need to drink about eight glasses of water today to stay hydrated, to let your muscles work well, your electrolytes work well, and especially if you're exercising to remove that lactic acid from your body. Stay tuned, we're right here on The Health Beat Show. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising, it, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. There's not much in this world more refreshing than a tall, ice-cold glass of water. However, more than half the world's population suffers from dehydration without even realizing that this can lead to serious health problems. Before considering the main signs of dehydration, let's see what will happen if you don't drink enough water. You are 60 to 80% of water, so if you don't drink enough water every day, it disappears from your blood up to 8%. This leads to narrow blood vessels, blood clots, raise blood pressure, and a risk of heart attack and stroke. Also, it disappears from your intercellular space, up to 26%. And this leads to raised acidity levels, gout, kidney stones, brittle bones, and lower immunity. Finally, the water disappears from your cells, up to 66%, which leads to higher cholesterol, reduced metabolism, and accelerated aging. The Health Beat Show, sponsored by Watson Wellness Water. Your health is your wealth. 
Welcome back to The Healthy Show. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. As promised, we want to answer some of your questions that you have sent to us on healthbeattv.info. I have three that I want to answer. The first one comes from Peggy G. And Peggy G says, Dear Dr. Watson, I am in a tough situation. I have a baby who appears to be dehydrated and I have an elderly mother in her 70s who will not drink a lot. Should I give them both the same thing? Well, that's a good question. You know, babies have about 73% of their whole body weight is fluid. So if a baby gets dehydrated, their fluid really gets contracted. In a baby, we have such fluids as Pedialyte. If you can give them something like that that has electrolytes in it, it will hydrate them better. It'll keep their sodium, their potassium, and their electrolytes in good shape. Now mom, if mom doesn't drink, she is at risk of having kidney problems, dehydration, kidney failure. Pedialyte can be good for that too. Some drinks like uh, mineral water can be good also, and any electrolyte water can also be good. Sometimes Gatorade, it does have a little bit of sugar, it does have a little bit of carbohydrates, but mom, at the elderly age, if she's not eating that much, a little bit of ice in it, that's good for her. Okay, let's go now to Terry M. And Terry M. is from San Jose. And Terry asks, um, why do people in the hospital have to get IV fluids, IV water, rather than just drinking water? Well, that's a good question. You know, sometimes if you get dehydrated, it causes problems with the kidneys. And as you know, a man's body has about 60% of the body weight as water, a woman 50% of the body weight as water. If you get dehydrated, we have to get straight to the blood vessel, straight to the kidneys. So an intravenous fluid like sodium chloride is warranted, particularly if your blood pressure is low, you haven't been eating. Now, a bag like this also has multiple vitamins in it. It has folic acid, it has thiamine, it has B12 in it. And those can go to the muscles, make your muscles stronger, make your brain work better, make your neurologic system go better. So that's why we sometimes use intravenous fluids in the hospital. The next question is, Dr. Watson, I'm preparing to travel to Mexico and I don't want to get Montezuma's Revenge. What is the best water for me to drink there? Well, as you know, E. coli in the water can give you diarrhea in Mexico. It's not quite as common as it used to be, but what we suggest is that you get a bottle of mineral water. There you go. Agua con gas. Agua with bubbles in it. Okay? Now you know that's not out of the tap. Okay? It squirted all over the place. One thing though, on a hot day, you are going to be safe. All right. Enjoy your trip to Mexico. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. Thanks for being here with us right here on the Health Beat Show. And always, every day, you can always drink some good purified Watson Wellness water. You're watching the Health Beat Show. We'll be right back after these important messages. The Health Beat Show, sponsored by Watson Wellness Water. Your health is your wealth. Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson, 
And diabetes is becoming a very, very major problem. Now, even for our young people, there are two types of diabetes. Number one is called type one diabetes or juvenile diabetes. It occurs in young people as a result of a deficiency of the gland called the pancreas. Type two is usually in adults and it usually has to do with the body size being bigger and putting stress on the pancreas and a cell in the pancreas called the beta cell cannot secrete enough insulin. I like to say it's like a Cadillac body trying to uh, be driven by a Volkswagen motor. It's too much stress on the pancreas. It can't make enough insulin. Now our young people who used to only have type 2 diabetes type 1 diabetes are now developing type 2 because they're becoming bigger and they have less exercise. Exercise seems to make your body more sensitive to the natural insulin. What are the signs and symptoms of diabetes? Well, losing weight real quick, getting blurred vision. If you're a woman, developing yeast infections that won't go away. And some of the men may develop yeast infections as well. Becoming very fatigued and having infections that are very difficult to heal, having problems with your peripheral vascular system, your toes, and getting sores on those. Make sure that you get a test called a hemoglobin A1C. That tells what your sugar is over a three month period. Ask your doctor to test a fasting blood sugar. Your blood sugar should be below 126 if you have not eaten anything or below 186 if you have eaten something. All right, that's it diabetes, if you knew better, you could do better. Because remember always that your health is your wealth. And when you have your health, you've got everything. God bless. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. Thanks for being with us on this episode of The Health Beat Show, where we try to educate you about different aspects of health care, about eating right, exercising right, what you can do to help yourself, how to access the health care system, what kind of questions to ask, what you should do for any particular disease state. Because I always believe that your health is your wealth. And when you have your health, you have everything. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. We'll see you next time. If you have your health, you have everything. You're gonna be Show you how